The Big 12 and the ACC continually are forced to team up. They did it once again earlier this week. We'll talk about that and more coming up on today's Big 12 Watch. I am your host, Josh Neighbors here. Crystal Ball College Football, part of the 365 Sports Network. You all can find us wherever you get your podcasts and here on YouTube as well. If you're finding us on YouTube, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave comments. Help us, once again, the subscriptions. That's really helpful if you all could help us with that. So uh, we always appreciate that. Find us on X slash Twitter at NWPod365. I am at Josh Neighbors underscore as well. Uh, I think that takes care of all the – oh, five stars if you find us in other podcast places. So, Bay 12 tournament's happening now. Uh, and I actually, as I'm recording this, a really just big lead for Texas Tech. Texas Tech come out and just started blowing the doors off of BYU. Um, and – which is which is fun. We'll recap a lot of that tomorrow. But – we have today is a story about the ACC in the big 12 and kind of the force team up that is happening because we've been talking so much about conference realignment on this channel and other channels. Right. Um, and you know, the talk about, Hey, the, the revenue and how that's going to be broken down. Um, and so because of that, it's kind of forced the big 12 and the ACC uh, and Dennis Dodd says this yesterday, they have basically a loyalty pledge on the CFP negotiations. ESPN needed to know everyone was in, uh, you know, the way it was being described, money and distribution agreed upon, the structure and format still be figured out. Ross Dellinger talking about it first, and Ross has an article about it. So the way Ross says it, uh, presidents in the ACC and Big 12 voted to authorize their commissioners to adopt the framework related to a new CFP, including a new revenue model and concepts around a playoff format, all of which will be part of a new contract with ESPN. Those knowledge of discussions spoke to Yahoo Sports under condition of anonymity. The two leagues were thought to be the most resistant to a deal. Their presidential vote is viewed as a significant hurdle cross to reaching an agreement. The Big 12 and ACC votes were unanimous, sources told Yahoo Sports. Um, so it's the CFP Management Committee. It's 10 conference commissioners and Notre Dame's AD. They're expected to meet here. And the expectation is, pending the approval from formal, you know, each president on the board, uh, the conferences will commit to mostly, most notably, a new revenue distribution model and parameters around a playoff format and a new, new governance structure. Um, so the big part of this is that, hey, the SEC and the Big Ten are going to split a majority of the money. And Dennis Dodd had more of a breakdown. Ross Dellinger also has this breakdown as well. But the way it looks like it's going to be distributed is SEC 29%, Big Ten 29%, ACC 17%, and that's just because they have more teams, Big 12 15%, Group of Five 9%, Independence they get the remainder. So obviously that's going to factor in Notre Dame, other schools like that who are uh, involved. And I think this step is significant. Obviously, if you're a Big 12 fan, your number one concern is this, is that the revenue is doubled for the, uh, for the Big 10 and for the SEC compared to what you and the ACC are getting. And so um, now they do have more teams, right? I guess the Big 12, what, they're at 14 right now. Those conferences are basically heading towards 18 and 20, right? So that it's, it's less money, but it's going to be double. And so that gap is going to be there. And um, I think, you know, a lot of folks, like we think about Kurt Signetti going to the Indiana job. That is a really impossible job football-wise, especially now they've added four schools that are much better than Indiana is. They've added Oregon, Washington, USC, and UCLA. If Indiana football were to play them all this year, they'd probably lose to all of them this year. Of most years, if Indiana played them, they would lose to all of them. Maybe one year they'd get one of them. If they had an amazing year, maybe they'd catch two of them. But Indiana football is not typically very good. So Kurt Signetti is basically going to take the bag, as Bud Elliott would say, take the check, take the losses. There are a lot of schools that are doing that. But that being said, those jobs like that, you know, Indiana's job might be just as appealing as an Oklahoma State job or a Kansas State job. Programs where coaches have come in, stayed, won a lot. But if the resources are there so much and the money is there so much that, hey, like, 
if you go coach four years at Indiana, you get one contract in Indiana after being a G5 coach or being a coach somewhere else, you don't have to worry about like working ever again. Um, it's hard to argue against that, right? These schools are offering some of these coaches life-changing money, like ridiculously life-changing money. And so if you're a coach, it's very difficult to turn down some of these dollar figures. And I understand that. And so I think that's a tangible example of where the resources fight really does hurt the big 12. And look, it's going to put more onus. And here's the NIL, all that stuff, guys, like that's going to get brought in house. So we'll have to see where that goes, but that could be a concern too. But I, I think it's just like the most, the, the easiest example that we can grasp right now is how much money these schools have. Right. And uh, the fact that like lower level, you know, lower level uh, schools like Purdue and Indiana and, you know, Kentucky and, uh, you know, like they're offering, they offer these coaches so much money. And even though it's a job where you might just get hired to get fired, it's worth to do it because what they can offer you as a coach financially uh, really is worth that. Uh, distribution of talent, it's a little bit different. I mean, obviously the South has always had a lot of great players. Concentration of players are there. So a lot of that's going to come down to, yeah, what kind of funding do you have? What can you offer the players? Because we're see, you know, we saw this year, the top, I think 11 recruits, according to rivals all went to 11 different schools. And so that is a bit more distribution of talent. You are seeing in the last two years, Washington make a national championship time, you know, game first time in 30 years, Michigan won it first time in a long time. TCU was in one last year, you know, so you are getting a bit more of different results, but typically speaking, it's big 10, it's sec ACC has been in there too. And we'll see what happens with Clemson and Florida state. And so you're, you're thinking about, okay, like the SEC, the Big 12 and the ACC, you know, they they need to make sure they're kind of on board because, look, they can block certain things and they've got enough schools to be, okay, it's cool. And you might say, well, Josh, last time two conferences teamed up, and more than two conferences, we had the alliance, right? And so it was the Big 10, it was the ACC, it was the Pac-12. And when they teamed up, uh, one of those conferences is gone, the Pac-12. One of those conferences, the Big Ten, rated the Pac-12. Another one of those conferences, the ACC, is in a weaker position than they were then, you know, money-wise, and looks like Clemson and FSU won out and other schools won out. And so their future is a bit, uh, and obviously, you know, they're adding Stanford, Cal, and SMU to the fold because I think they can see uh, a little bit of the writing on the wall in some ways for some of the schools. So like you're seeing that now, like you are seeing some of these schools or these conferences, you know, slip. And so you have to wonder, all right, is it bad if the ACC and the big 12 got together and formed an alliance, a voting pack? And really at this point though, it's like, what, what do they have left to lose? Like the big 12 can't just gut the, can't just gut the ACC and vice versa. Um, you know, you can't take Louisville, Pitt, Virginia Tech, Virginia, NC State. Like, I guess you could try, but is it possible you could grab that many schools at one time? I don't know. Uh, I don't know if ESPN, the television companies, Fox would all be down for that. Um, and, you know, I don't know if you can merge fully it is right now because, like, there are some schools, especially in the ACC, that bottom part of the ACC, guys, like, it is not a super valuable commodity. Like, Wake Forest, not a super valuable TV commodity. Sy Syracuse not a super valuable TV commodity, Boston college, not a, despite what the broadcasting folks will tell you a lot of, and I love my Syracuse alum friends, um, Boston college. I know it's in Boston, but like not a massive Boston college fan base out there. Right. Uh, I guess Georgia Tech's in Atlanta, but like not a massive Georgia tech fan base out there. Right. BC is a private school. It's not easy to get into, Right. So, you, you know, you might have more UConn fans, Providence fans, the larger state schools in those areas. Uh, it's private. The Providence actually might be uh, private. Let's see. Providence uh, University. Um, I think it's, yeah, what, PU? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Is that a, uh, it's Catholic. So I guess it's probably, it's probably, yeah, it's probably a private school, whatever. Um, kind of besides the point. But like, you know, they might have fans of those other schools there. I guess once again, it is in Boston, but like Syracuse isn't Syracuse. It's, really far away from any major city. And a lot of the people that went there, you know, it's, it, that's another school. Uh, that is not a state school. It's like $60,000 a year to go there. So Wake Forest, another private school, right? Duke's got the branding for basketball. It really helps a lot. And they've been decent in football. Wake Forest has been decent in football too. But you see what I'm saying here? Like these schools 
are not massive TV draws. Um, maybe is it worth it because you get rid of another show in town when it comes to, but like, I, I think you're talking about a full merger at that point. Like you're talking about full merger because these two conferences need to be on the same page. The gutting is going to take place. The, 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 some schools are going to move up like FSU and Clemson and whatever. I think especially at Florida state and probably Miami too have value as these massive brands, Carolina, I think, I think Duke would go to maybe EVA, maybe Virginia tech. I mean, we'll see, but I think those schools have some value. And so I think any school, those val values always going to get moved up to the other ranks. And once they get moved up to the other ranks, it's kind of game over. So like, I, I don't know how much rearranging and moving is still available to be done. I feel like it'd be more of a merger, but also I don't know if you could merge fully. Cause like if we're chasing TV dollars, there are some school, like there's a reason why Washington state and Oregon state aren't in the conference, right? They do not have a ton of value. So if they did, they would be in the Big 12. They would be in a different conference if they offered a lot. And I've had a bunch of folks say, no, all well, these, oh, look at the TV viewership numbers. Yeah, they, they have good numbers because they're on late. They do not have large fan bases. If they, this is such a dumb argument. If they did, and I'm not saying if your fan base is suck or they're small or whatever, but if they had a bunch of value, why did they get left behind? Why didn't somebody pick them up? Just saying, like there's a reason why that nobody picked them up. Uh, I'm sure you know, everybody ran the analysis on them about how much value they bring. If they, if they brought that value, that would be a lot better. Uh, they'd be in a better position, I would say. So that has to be considered. Uh, we talk about them. Also, you know, on, on this front for the Big 12, um, working the ACC, I don't think, you know, new commissioner too. You've got a new commissioner trying to find forward ways, you know, things like at scheduling arrangements. I would say, especially for basketball, um, that could be really helpful if you can create some kind of you know, agreement where you all play them in basketball and things of that nature. Um, that would be helpful. Football wise, maybe linking up the bowls. I don't know how that would work in particular, but the, the big next step is making sure that you have access because they're agreeing on a revenue model here. And it looks like that the playoff money is, is at this point, not directly tied. I mean, I would assume eventually will be tied to how many schools are in like, with this revenue model, 29, 29, 17, 15, 9, whatever it is, it, it kind of just seems like um, it's implying like the most spots will go to the SEC and to the Big Ten, which I think it will. We don't know exactly what that's going to look like, but we have to see. And then the at-large spots. So like there's some presumption here that over the course of time, most of the schools in this 12-team playoff are going to be from the Big Ten and the SEC. That's, that's okay. I mean, the SEC, I'm okay with. The Big Ten guess now you're adding Oregon and Washington and USC and UCLA. It makes it a bit more likely. But once again, like there's not always a bunch of teams in the big 10 that are, that are, you know, should be involved in the Nash championship game or the fight for Nash championship. Right. Um, you know, like this year, man, like it's, it, it's going to change now. Our perspective is going to change on this now. Uh, and eventually once again, I feel like we're heading towards super league territory. And once we're in the super league, at that point, folks, I mean, it's just like, it's going to be the NFL and it's going to be a problem. Uh, but, but, you know, I, I think that there's a way that the big 12 can still get two in every single year. The ACC might, might be fit two in every single year or hopefully most years, but it feels like you're heading towards a three, four team SEC big 10 situation. Once again, the SEC this year, Bama, uh, Georgia, um, Ole Miss and Missouri, probably four teams that you could argue yeah, deserve, deserve to get in, right? And you can make a case for all four of them. Ole Miss, I wasn't really super impressed with. But like Penn State, Penn State, the two big games they played all year, they they lost, right? Ohio State, you know, probably should get in too. You know, they, they would get in. Uh, Michigan obviously was deserving to be in. But, you know, there, there are the, were there four Big Ten teams that were worth it? You know, three Big Ten teams that were worth it? Uh, maybe three. I would say 2.5, to be honest. Big 12 this season, Texas was probably it. And that, that's the thing is, that's the nice part about having a championship though, or having these AQs is that like, yeah, you're going to have guaranteed a spot at the table, a seat at the table. And that's nice to have. And once again, this year, you know, it's not a great indicator because Texas is moving on. Right. But it's, it's going to be nice to have a situation where you are guaranteed, right. Uh, you are guaranteed spot. So yeah. Are you giving something up here? Yes. But I mean, let's be honest, like the sec is dominant. The big 10 is the only one where you kind of look at it and you're like, well, are they as deserving? But on the money side of things, guys, the Big Ten is such a, a massive cash cow. I mean, the Big Ten is making more money than the per school than the SEC is because their markets and their brands are really good, right? They're in, you know, they're in New York City and they're across the big cities across the Midwest, and they have these massive, 
massive alumni bases. The Big Ten schools are so big, right? And the relatively wealthy fan bases too. But like Ohio State's a massive brand, Michigan, massive brand, Penn State, massive brand, uh, you know, Wisconsin, and, you know, uh, Washington, Oregon, Wisconsin, USC, so like all these big brands. That's why the money for them is there. And that's, and I think that's, that's, you know, what you're seeing this being bore out in the CFP structure. Big question though, is like, what are the small details? What are the fine details? Do the small details of the CFP kind of push us towards a situation where the super league becomes more clear faster, or is it more equitable in terms of format for everybody else? Um, you know, that, that's kind of a big question here, but does the ACC and the big 12 need to merge? I don't necessarily think so. Honestly, it's kind of good if they're apart because they get more seats at the table as two separate leagues and they command more money as two separate leagues as if they were, you know, going to get together and then cut teams off. So like, it's actually kind of better if they're apart, maybe they don't need a merger. All right. That will do it for today's show. I have to go because there are another shows, about to come on record, uh, follow us on Twitter at NW 365. I'm at Josh neighbors underscore find the show. We get your podcast and on YouTube as well. All right, folks. Talk to you manana.